Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Train. Good morning. What is up? This is one and done off-season edition. As we have told you, we are going to be able to bring you some coaches' interviews from around the country, some reporters, dive into everything in the off-season because, as you know, college basketball never sleeps. My name is Jay Heinrich, the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Train. You can follow me on Twitter at Dr. William Cannon. Right over here in the middle, right, oh, now to the side of me, over, wait, yeah, there we are. You can find him on those Twitter streets, at FantasyNav, Mr. Eric Romoff. Eric, how are we today? Doing well. Uh, I, I think the theme that you mentioned off the top is is the one to underscore here, right? We are kicking off our off-season tour through the WCC and our coaching interviews, but college basketball never sleeps, right? There is no such thing as an off-season, so we are still here pushing out content just as readily as we were during the regular season. And I am super excited about today's show. Absolutely. And not to be forgotten, our guy, you can follow him on Twitter at MCHolland34, Mr. Money, Mike Holland. Mike, how are you today, man? I'm doing great, man. It was awesome talking transfer portal last night. Um, you know, we've covered that topic uh, last last couple of days and the coaching carousel. So the off season, you know, college basketball doesn't stop. And uh, I'm excited because we're, we're going out west and we're going to talk to a very successful head coach um, of the Pepperdine Waves. And it's my pleasure to introduce head coach Lorenzo Romar. Let's bring him up here. Coach Romar, how are you? I'm fine, fellas. Transfer portal, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's, a, lot, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you had very interesting discussion. Absolutely. <laughs> we we certainly do. Obviously, the the, the transfer portal has uh, has overhauled the landscape in in college basketball. So it's been an ongoing topic for us. But coach, really really appreciate you joining us and, and taking some time out of your very busy day to sit down with us. I, I wanted to start, you know, by kind of putting a bow on on last season, right? I, I know you've been been doing this for quite a while. You've you know you've you've seen a, a ton of different variations of teams, but you know, was was there anything that was unique onto itself about last year's team, or do you have any takeaways about that season that was? Oh, we were awfully close in a lot of games, and when coaches talk like that at the end of the year, what it means ultimately is we weren't good enough. We were very young. The last two years, we've been the youngest team in our in our league, and uh, it showed in a lot of cases. It it, it reared its it, its ugly head at times, and uh, cost us some games, but our guys uh, had great character and continued to fight throughout the year. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. A really young team that you had there. Um, I want to ask you about uh, about Maxwell Lewis and the potential for him to be the first Pepperdine Wave drafted in the first round of the NBA draft since Brandon Armstrong in 2001. Uh, tell us what he means to you and what this outcome means to this program and what kind of player is uh, you know, an NBA team going to get in Maxwell? Well, first of all, when you when you see him up close and in person, his length, his his positional size, uh, just jumps out at you. And then when you watch how he moves, his first step, how quick it is, how long it is, uh, there was a particular play. And and as I looked at that one, I started to see he does that quite a bit. He's dribbling the ball right inside the three point line, about a foot off of the off of the free throw line uh outside of the key and he's going left he spins doesn't take another dribble spins to his right and ends up shooting a layup on the right hand side of the of the rim it just shows you how long he is and how explosive he is and uh that's the kind of talent we're talking about he can shoot the ball from the perimeter he, he has tremendous uh athleticism and uh, as he continues to grow, he has the potential to become a really good defender. Coach, I'm going to ask you to elaborate a little bit on on the eye test. You know, you talked a lot about what you saw in Maxwell. And um, when you're recruiting somebody, uh, is there a spot in that process where you can sort of tell that there's an NBA level ceiling there? Is that during the recruiting process? practice is it based off of the pure athleticism that you were describing or or something else how, how do you recognize that in the player well most of the time 
it doesn't take very long. When they have NBA talent, that one doesn't take very long. But then there are others that haven't quite bloomed yet. They haven't quite blossomed yet. They're, they still have their upside. Uh, uh, you have to watch them a little bit longer sometimes. But if they're going to play in the NBA, it usually jumps out at you. And as I mentioned earlier, when you look at his size, at 6'7 with a 6'10 wingspan, you look at his athleticism, you look at how – he releases the ball so easily with range, how effective a jump shooter he is. Uh, you kind of start to figure it out that, uh, okay, this guy might have a chance. Yeah, it definitely seems like the, the the cream rises to the top there. It's It's got to be fun for that light bulb to go off when when you know you've got someone that's that's special on the roster. Um, we, we talked about it a bit. Off the top, um, you know, the the theme for the offseason and the overarching theme for college basketball is how the transfer portal and NIL have really changed the landscape, right? So you've you've been around the block a little bit. I'm I'm curious to know, you know, what your perspective is on on the impact of these two things on the college game, but also, you know, in what ways you've had to kind of evolve your approach as a coach and as a program builder. Well, you you could either love the transfer portal. NIL. First of all, the NIL in itself, where kids are able to take advantage of their talents uh, while they're in college, I think is great. My issue has always been how do you monitor it? And uh, but for these young people to have an opportunity to make money uh, before they hit the NBA, I think it's great for them. Uh, the, the, with the portal, you're, it's either really helping you or it's really hurting you, and it's uh, it's different now because you can't look at your roster and project what it's going to be like in two years. And in some cases, even one year, you just have to figure that someone's going to go into the portal and you can't figure out who it's going to be. And so you've got to, you've got to kind of recruit for the next, for the upcoming year. You can't really recruit as much for the future. So, well, this is what we have in line. So, Maybe we don't need a forward. We need more of a point guard. And uh, as soon as the season's over, the forward walks in your office and tells you, I'm probably going to go in the portal. Well, now we need a forward. So we hadn't planned on that. But we just got to stay ready. And coaches all over America are daily checking the, the new name or new names that enter the portal that day. And if you have an opportunity to try to get them to come with you. So as they leave you, it's it's a little easier to replace, but it's hard to plan. Yeah, I hear that, Coach. Uh, I think we're over 1,400 players and heading towards another 1,700 plus as we've had the past couple of years. So, um, yeah, looking for a bunch of a bunch of different looking rosters this coming year. But, you know, we know some of some of the players in your program are, are moving on via the portal. But uh, with that comes the opportunity to obviously reshape your roster. And, and one guy that you guys have announced is the Wyoming and USC guard, Ethan Anderson. What are you yes. most excited about with uh, with the addition of Ethan? He's going to be a fifth year senior. He's been <laughs> to the NCAA tournament. He's played in the Elite Eight and he's a good basketball player. He's mature. He's a leader. He's strong. Uh, he is kind of what we have been facing the last two years with the young team. It seems like everyone we play against have four and five and six year players in there. And uh, that's something that we have not had. Uh, someone in their fourth, fifth year that is a starter that's contributing heavily. And uh, he, he provides that for us. So it's uh, with a young team. I, I don't think next year. Uh, we've had freshmen and sophomores primarily playing the majority of the minutes. And this year with the addition of Ethan, that'll change a little bit. And I think it just helps in every aspect with our program. Coach, you let off talking about how young you guys are, you know, um, last in your conference in age, you know, in the 300s and division one experience the last few years, you talked about Anderson's experience and what he brings to the table as you build your roster through, you know, through your recruiting, but also, through the transfer portal, do you have to focus? Is, is like the experience factor something that you focus in on there? Um, how do you approach that in terms of your roster building? I think you have to. It's uh, We were hopeful that we could do it just through recruiting maybe high school kids, but uh, it's taken two years. We've taken our lumps, and we I believe we have some really good pieces within our, within our program. 
but it's taken a couple of years. And now we're finally older, though. And now the challenge is going to be how do we stay older? And you can do it through the portal, but I also think that uh, we need to continue to recruit out of high school as those guys develop along with the guys that you get in the portal. Yeah, absolutely. We've we've talked a lot through the course of this season and the young off season about just how I'm, how impactful it is to have an experienced group of guys. So definitely understand where, where you're coming from there. I, I know that we are very early in the off season, so there are still a few spots to fill in on your roster. But from the guys that you are expecting to come back, is there uh, is there one or two that you're you know you're you're forecasting them to make? A, a pretty big leap forward in the season to come in terms of production or on court leadership. Well, I think, you know, coming back, our, our team captain last year was Houston Millette. Uh, he's averaged 13 points a game this, uh, in his first two years of college. And I think he'll be even better next year. He will be now a veteran. He'll be one of those older guys. And uh, he's, a, he's a talent. He's a great leader. Uh, Javon Porter, uh, 6'11", versatile forward, uh, I think will make a big jump as well. He'll be stronger. Uh, he'll understand this the game at this level uh, even more so. You know, he averaged 12 points and seven rebounds as a freshman uh, in our league. And for our team, I think he'll take a, a big jump. I think Malik Moore is a freshman that did not average double digits, but he's a talent. He's gotten stronger in our spring workouts. Uh, you can just see that uh, he's ready to take the next step. You know, one young man we had, Bubakar Kulabali, mm -hmm. he was injured and uh, he ended up having season ending surgery, but he played with us up until December. And while he was with us, he was tied for the lead in block shots. He's a, a 6'10 big guy that can go out and cover guards and he can protect the rim. And we missed that. He'll be back. So just to, in terms of returners, to, to name a few, uh, we think those guys are going to uh, really take a big jump this year. Yeah, you have to be excited about uh, Millette and Porter for sure. And, and some of these guys that you mentioned are going to be a, a huge impact uh, coming into this uh, next season we have here. But, Coach, hey, you started your career, uh, your Division One coaching career at Pepperdine in the 90s. Now, now that you're back, uh, how different is the West Coast Conference and how has it evolved? Well, BYU has, has left us, is leaving us, but – when I was here before, BYU was not in the conference. Uh, Gonzaga was beginning to win the conference and finish at the top, but they hadn't quite turned into the juggernaut that they became and that they are now. So that was different. St. Mary's, although when Ernie Kent was there, uh, they won the league, went to the NCAA tournament. They weren't a perennial powerhouse. I think over the years with Coach Randy Bennett, they become one of the best programs on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've done a tremendous job, and you know that they're going to uh, be good year in and year out. The, the conference, by and large, has just improved. It's just it's become a, a better uh, conference from top to bottom uh, from the last time I was here. Yeah, I hear that, Coach. The WCC, it's a you know multi bid league now, so you know it's it's the off season do you have any vacations lined up or what are some things that uh you know you're doing this off season to get you ready for the upcoming year Vac vacations help help me with what does that mean <laughs> what is this thing? what is my, thing my, called vacation my wife would answer that with no we don't have any vacations <laughs> yet but we plan on trying to plan something that's another thing about the transfer portal your year is extended when the season's over i would say up until may May toward the end of May, unless you filled all your spots, you're still working, recruiting, trying to work the portal. Whereas before, you know, the season ended and you had a little time until the spring or recruiting period in April. But this period is about to come up here in a week or two, in two weeks. We're back on the road again recruiting. So uh, vacation time, usually, if, if you're able to do it for us, is probably sometime in August. Well, I hear that, Coach, and uh, you know we we obviously appreciate your time, but uh, want to ask you one last thing here. What's uh, what's something that you want people to know uh, nationally about your program that doesn't get the attention that it it deserves? Oh, I, I think that uh, again, I, I keep mentioning it, and it it's not an excuse; it's a fact. We've been very young, and 
we're not young anymore. I think we're ready to now turn the corner and take the next step and, and be much improved next year. Yeah, absolutely. It has been a fun program to watch you build there in your second stint. Lorenzo Romar, head coach of the Pepperdine Waves. If you are not watching the Waves, if you are not watching WCC basketball, you are absolutely doing it wrong. Coach, really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule. Really appreciate you sharing some insight about last year and the year to come. Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Good luck this year. Okay. Bye-bye. So we are in the off season, the off season that of course never sleeps. And that means that there is a ton of information to still update everyone on, even from the last time that we were here, like 12 hours ago, right? This, (laughs) this college basketball off season never sleeps. So there are a few more notes from around the league. Um, Mike, you want to kick us off with some of those key points that have transpired since the last time we were on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, we did a lot of transfer portal talk the last couple of days. We're going to talk about some guys that are returning um, to their programs. And one that's kind of surprising to me, but, you know, as we got word that this potentially could happen is Kyle Filipowski announcing he's returning to Duke. Uh, That is huge news. Um, I mean, what can you say? The kid is super skilled. He's an NBA player. He's joining Mark Mitchell and Tyrese Proctor, uh, who are also coming back. So Duke, uh, typically a one-and-done type station, getting – these five-star players back in the fold. Uh, but with that uh, comes, uh, you know, comes some other news where five-star McKenzie Mbako has uh, requested a release from his national letter of intent. So, uh, you know, Jay, what are your, uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, Filipowski returning and, and, you know, the talent at Duke right now? Obviously a huge deal for them to really solidify themselves as somebody that's going to contend for that number one preseason spot. I mean, he's just that type of a player. Um, the rich get richer, right? Like you, you, we, every time we think Duke is left for dead, they're, they sit up like they were the undertaker after, you know, Randy Orton hits an RKO. I mean, this is, it is what it is. Like it, they, they never go in anywhere. They're in there. It's not like, and not to bash on Texas tech, even though I'll usually take an opportunity to do that. But when a coach leaves Texas tech, when they were, you know, in a good place, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be sustained success. Duke is in a place now, and obviously still a good coach in place there. Yeah. Uh, somebody, the, the program's in very worthy hands. But uh, yeah, man, like for me, that's just, um, the rich keep getting richer and and Duke, it, Duke is never going anywhere. We, we got to just accept that, man. Eric, any, do you have any thoughts on the Duke situation here? Yeah, I mean, uh, year in and year out, right? An embarrassment of riches. This was a team that made their way in as a five seed last year, probably were a little underseeded there, and that we like to make a deep run, and they go right back to that war chest and, and reload, right? So uh, tell me when you've, you know, stop me when you've heard this one before. Probably looking at another strong season for the Blue Devils in the year to come. Yeah, I would think they're uh, probably the early favorite to be preseason number one. So yep. that has a ton of, ton of, uh, you know, five stars times ten is a, a lot of stars. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. How I was they told do. there would be no math. Yeah, exactly. Every show. Um, <laughs> one, one more, one more uh, team to talk about. You know, before we before we close this this episode of one and done out, Michigan State. You know, I I really ragged on the Big Ten hard for their lack of performance in the tournament, and Michigan State was that team that did you know win a couple of games there. Um, Tyson Walker and Malik Hall say, announced that they're coming back. Mm-hmm. Mike, um, what does this mean for that Spartan program and Coach Izzo? Yeah, uh, huge news. I mean, Tyson Walker is a he's a bucket, as Eric likes to say. And Malik Hall, man, he's a he's a really good athlete. Um, they're going to be really experienced. We just heard uh, Coach Romar talk about uh, experience and pieces coming back and. Yeah, I mean, you pair the, you know, these guys up with Hogard and Aikens again, run it back. Um, we saw how valuable that was during the NCAA. Um, so, yeah, I'm, ex- I'm expecting Michigan State, and it's Tom Izzo, right? It's, I don't think it really matters what his roster looks like, but it does help when you get, uh, you know, when you get quality players returning. Eric, uh, you know, any, any final thoughts on Michigan State before we close this out? Yeah, just to kind of, you know, double back on, on your point, not only are we talking about guys that have – experience in this league coming back for another year another year older but guys that as recently as a few weeks ago are coming off of a pretty deep tournament run right and with with tom izzo specifically right like 
we we like to we like to count down the calendar january february iso april may so obviously he builds around that that playoff postseason culture and having guys that are already familiar with flipping that switch and are bought into that approach i mean it, it makes this team all the more dangerous for for next season you know, talk about another team that doesn't matter if they're a three seed, a two seed, a seven seed. You always feel like they're going to make noise in March. And again, that's that's an Izzo thing. That's the program that he's built there. And uh, yeah, Duke and Michigan State, it's it's just like uh, the sun rising in the east. It's happening, man. And uh, and that's why we love it. The pre- sometimes predictability is a good thing. And we'll uh, we'll even admit that for Duke on one and done here. So That'll do it for this episode. If you're watching us live, be sure to not go too far. Later on today, we're going to be talking to St. Mary's head coach, Randy Bennett. So keep your eyes peeled. Make sure you have that subscribe button smashed, those uh, notification bells on. And uh, we're going to be bringing you these coaches' interviews throughout the offseason. Like Eric said earlier, making our run through the WCC and beyond so make sure you check us out there and until next time this has been one and done i am jay heinrich at dr william cannon he is at fantasy nav on the twitter streets eric romoff the captain of our ship el capitan himself at mc holland 34 don't go far one and done is never too far if you keep us in your heart (laughs) we'll see you next time Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.